Hello and welcome. Today we're taking a look at a set of UTG Pro rings. More specifically, they're 30 millimeter low by 10 millimeter dovetail rings. These are specifically designed for particularly air rifles and uh, CZ 450 series rifles. So 452, 455, 457. And that's why I bought these, because I had just purchased a CZ 457 and I needed a set of rings. Typically, a lot of people will buy a Picatinny rail for them, and uh, I had done that option with my 452, but I didn't care for how the rail really sits on the rifle. You gotta dig set screws into it. And even though the 457 is slightly different, I still didn't want to run that sort of setup with with this particular gun. I wanted to get I wanted to have as few moving parts between the receiver and the scope as possible. So when I was searching for rings, I saw these and instantly fell in love with them. Now, I'm sorry I can't do a, an unboxing because when I first got them, I was too excited and ripped the box open without thinking, hey, maybe I should film this. But I was smart enough to at least take pictures of the box after I had opened them, which I will show you now. So a couple key features around the box, basically everything you're going to need to know, especially one part, which is that these are made in the USA. Uh, and that's more incredible when we talk about how much these cost and what kind of features they have. But right off the bat, the fit and finish on these are exquisite. They're not heavy, but they feel robust, if that makes any sort of sense. They're really well finished. They have really good anodizing on them. There might be a couple of marks here and there, but that's just because of me banging them around between putting them on my rifle and taking them on and off several times. But they're excellent. The fit and finish on both of these are superb, and they look the part... All the engraving, all the anodizing, like I said, is excellent. And they come with several really nice features. One of which is the fact, hold on, that all of the cap screws and the main lock screw for the side are all T25s, which, if you're familiar with less expensive rings, is pretty impressive because T25 is a very large driver head. And what's nice about this is, if I can get to focus, What's nice about this is you won't have to worry about stripping this out when you go to torque this down. UTG does say that you have to torque the cap screws down to 25 inch pounds, and it's not a terrible amount, but it's really nice to know that you have such a big Torx driver head on there, so this way you don't have to worry about stripping it. So, really cool feature. So, I'm going to really quick, going to remove this cap and show you another nice feature. There we go. And there you can see, anodizing is even throughout the top and the, and the inside. Very cool. But one of the other features I want to showcase is this set screw that you'll see at the very bottom of the ring. And what this does is it protrudes through the bottom. And on 457 rifles, there is there are holes drilled on the top of the receiver for a pin like this. So what UTG did was get this pin. So what you do is you would loosen up the main clamp, line it up get this started, close the main clamp, and then torque this down ever so slightly so this way you don't have to worry about the rings moving forward or backwards on the rail. What happens if you're using these on a 452 or a 455, which I don't think have uh, those dimples in the in the action, you simply back this out till it's flush at the bottom, then it's gonna be flush with the top. It's actually gonna be under the inside of the ring, so you don't have to worry about the scratching your scope. So it's not gonna intrude on the inside, and you could just run it on a 452 or a 455 or any other sub subsidiary uh, action that CZ has that runs a 10 millimeter rail. Another really cool feature, I'm using a regular driver as opposed to the one that comes with it because I, I can spin this a little bit faster. But another really cool feature is that the main clamp on this is spring loaded. Now, if you've ever taken rings on and off multiple times, at least I have with what I currently do, uh, it really sucks that when you go to pull off a ring sometimes, this doesn't retract or it gets stuck, or if you're trying to line it up on top and it collapses and you have to reopen it and shake it, it's just annoying. The fact that UTG had put uh, two very heavy springs on this, you can't see the springs, they're embedded on the inside, but you have two really good positive springs on this, there's plenty of spring pressure on that is really cool because once you go to crack this back and it's going to come off the rail and then you could just take the scope right off. Really, really nice feature. UTG didn't have to do that, but they did. So you already got the one set screw that for the lock, the two springs for the main clamp. Under here you can see made in USA with the part number 
and again right there 30 millimeter for the rings and 10 millimeter for the base really really cool that utg was able to make these rings in the u.s with the quality that these are made out of which is extremely high and with all these features for the price that these come in at i bought these off of opticsplanet.com they are $42 for the low and $50 for the medium and high. However, if you want to buy these off of Midway, I think they go for like $55, but you can get 1 inch, 30 millimeter, and 34 millimeter IDs, which is really, really cool that they have that many options for whatever scope you want to run on your CZ or air gun, whatever it takes a 10 millimeter rail on top. So when you think of it like that, these are really good value for money. If you're not in need for a 15 or a 30 MOA rail from like, let's say 419, you're saving $100 on the rail right there, plus however much money in, in rings. Now, if you already have Picatinny rings and you think that you need the 13 or 15 MOA worth of adjustment built into the rail, then you're gonna go with that. But for me, my my scopes allow me to shoot well past 100 yards with my, with my 22 LR. Plus, I really like how these look on the rifle, which I'm going to now mount them up and mount up the scope and show you what these look like on the, ac on the action. And here you can see the rings on the action. Now, the one thing that I'm gonna critique with this is the fact that you only have four dimples, count them one, two, three, four, on the receiver. You have this one up here, this one just forward of the ejection port, this one just behind the ejection port, and this one all the way at the rear. So you're kind of limited with how you're gonna set these rings up for your particular scope and your particular eye, necessary eye relief. For me, I need to use the front and the middle, or at least the rear middle dimple. So it limits you greatly on how you're gonna set this up if you wanna use the set screws. Now, if you don't want to use the set screws, you have all the free range that you want. You have a good extra half inch back here and a good inch and a half back here. But this just so happens to fit my particular scope for my particular eye relief with that scope quite well. And I'm going to finish torquing these down and my scope and show you what it looks like when it's all said and done. And there you have it. So I ended up torquing these down to what they recommended, which is about 45 inch pounds, but I did not recommend the top screws down to 25 inch pounds because I think for this particular rifle and how I, I try to baby it, I think 25 inch pounds is a little bit too tight. Uh, I torqued these down to about 15 and you know what, if it just so happens to loosen up the scope or if the scope loosens up and I have to readjust it, it's easy enough for me to just torque these down. It's not the end of the world. I'd rather under torque these on this particular rifle, then over torque them and damage any parts of the inside of the scope because this is right next to the adjuster inside and I don't want to mess with any of the mechanics or any of the glass. So for me, 15 inch pounds works fine. I, I haven't had an issue with it before, but if, it, I, if I do, it's easy enough to just torque these down. I don't use blue Loctite on this because if I want to take it off, as you saw, it's really easy. On my higher caliber rifles, I always blue Loctite everything just to ensure that it doesn't shoot loose. On this being just a 22 LR, I don't worry about that too much. So for me in this particular rifle, the lows with my cheek weld is perfect. My cheek goes on here. I look directly through the center of the scope. The only thing I have to worry about is the eye relief forward and backwards. And as you can see, I'm just at the cusp of where I can still use the set screws on the rings to lock into the receiver. So any farther forward, I would not be able to put the ring in this position. I'd have to move it back and not use that little pin. Not the end of the world, but it's cool that I get the chance to do it. I probably could move the front one back here, but that would involve rotating this around 180 degrees and having the locks be on opposite sides, which my OCD cannot handle that. Plus, if there is any sort of machining issues and you put one ring backwards than the other, they might not line up properly and it could cause problems to the scope. Now, one thing that you will note, and I'm sure a lot of people have this question, clearance from the front objective to the barrel itself. This being a precision environment, this has got their, their bull barrel, and this being an SWFA fixed power, it's got a 42 millimeter objective. And there's about five millimeter clearance here, which is perfect. So the other scopes I was looking at upgrading this 16X with in the future uh, include the PST Gen 2 by Vortex, which I think runs a 44 and a 50 millimeter front objective. So with there being five millimeters here, five here, five here, it's about an extra 10. So I could technically fit about a 52 millimeter front objective on this. So if I wanted to go to a 50, I should have about two mils clearance, give or take, which would be as close to perfect as you could ever want to hope. So there you have it. Nice little review on these rings. I wanted to make this because I really love these rings. I've had these on the gun for about a thousand rounds now, 
and they just look absolutely fantastic. So if you're looking for just a set of rings for your four, for your 450X series of CZ, I highly recommend these. The fit, finish, overall quality, and the price, and the available options that you get, different heights, different ring sizes, one inch 30 millimeter and 34 millimeter for under 60 bucks for an American made set of rings that look this good and have this many features, I'm sold. Thank you very much for watching. See you again next time.